Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today I can finally get to talk about, and that's because they're very late, is the AMD 7600X and the 7900X. So uh, it was originally arranged after my original reviews, AMD would send me these out on the day that the, all of the processors got launched. So I should have got them technically on day two. Uh, well, uh, let's just say a courier lost the UK's entire second batch of processors for the press. Uh, where we all got the ones we didn't have. So we get two, there's four in total. They send us two, we do the reviews, and then after the reviews are live, we get the second two. It's just so that the press kind of get two of each, and it mixes the launch day stuff. So, uh, and I have actually been waiting for the 7900X because I am going to be using the 7900X for my motherboard reviews for both the X670 and the B560. B650, there's too many numbers and 550s and 560s and 650s and 660s. It's super confusing. Anyway, so I'm gonna use that to review all of them and then just so that you know, when it gets to some of the higher end uh, X670 boards, I'll then stick the 7950X in that to be able to really punish the VRMs. Ah, so I was actually right at the start quite excited about the 7600X. It's gonna come in around the 330 pounds mark. Now, uh, clock speeds are actually quite good because I did see this hitting 5.5 gigahertz fairly consistently uh, across its cores. And it does say on the back 4.3 gigahertz base and then uh, 5.3 gigahertz max boost, but it did actually a fair bit better than that because of core boost and precision boost. Well, I didn't have precision boost overdrive on, so it would have been core boost. But anyway, that did uh, very well. They both get hot though. Uh, with the 7900X, that was around the 5.7 gigahertz mark. Now, before I get into the graphs, what I will say to you is I did manage to get the 7600X at 5.35 gigahertz. I was a bit disappointed with that, if I'm honest, because the 7700X, I actually managed to get at uh, 5.7 gigahertz across all of the cores. So I was actually hoping this was gonna go 5.5, five, 5.6 five, maybe, and it would be an absolute barnstormer. Sadly, it wasn't. With the 7900X, uh, I managed to get that at 5.45 across all of the cores. Now these were all sub 1.3 volts. So you were looking at around 1.275 volts for both, but that was obviously tested in the Be Quiet case, this is the static test rig. All of the motherboards and all of the uh, AMD processors will go through this static test rig. And I do have a 360 millimeter Be Quiet AIO in the roof. And we normally ran that somewhere between balance and extreme, depending on whether we were overclocking. But I will say that they both do need decent cooling if you want to get the absolute best for them because the processors are designed to boost themselves until your cooling gives up. So if your cooling gives up early, it won't boost as much. So we've got the best case scenario from them here, uh, but the thing is, don't be afraid of 80 plus degrees because AMD is saying they're designed to run like that 100% of the time. So I've given you a little bit of insight into the overclocking, although I haven't been able to spend as much time on these because they're quite late now. There's a lot of content out there already. And if I'm 100% honest about this review, I'm doing this so that the, for fullness, so that I have produced the data rather than the fact, you know, I'd actually like to have had these before launch and I would have done them all for day one, but obviously we can't. Now the blender results, the 7900X, down at the bottom is actually within a minute in its own kind of area. And you can see it there around that 10, 11 minute mark for the 4K run. Now the 4K run is our own OC3D benchmark. We do this, it's 4 million polygons. Uh, and that is actually quite a long blender benchmark. With the ones that you can download online, they're actually done really quickly. So for our ones to take this long, should show that we are really punishing them. We're actually debating bringing in an 8K version for the super high-end ones now, just so that we can really stretch their legs. Uh, so that's kind of in its own area there, because you've got the 13600K to its left, 
and then you've got kind of the eco mode for the 7950X to its right and there is quite a big gap either side. With the 7600X it's obviously it's got a lot less cores, there's a lot, it's not really a productivity processor so it's down the kind of slow end of the graph as you can see that you know it's taken five minutes to do our 1080 uh, benchmark uh, and that's almost twice as long as some of their higher end processors. Cinebench again it's productivity you can have a look you can pick at the graphs now one of the things I do want to say about the graphs is hopefully the 45 degrees is helping you more we're doing the graphs along the bottom like that so we can have more results because if we just put them up the side over here we have less of them but then the bars are just really long and it doesn't really make a lot of sense to my head so I'm trying my best to find a way that we can make this way work. I know it does mean that you've got to concentrate a little bit more but bear with us and we can between us we can uh, work on this because like I said we've now got it on 45 degrees we're now putting it in bold we may make the text a little bit bigger we are trying to please you guys at home so just just give me a bit of breathing space and I am definitely taking your criticisms and advice on board and we are constantly evolving with this ah anyway uh, so graphs yes as you can see it in there the other thing was there are many, many, many more tests on the OC3D website, both productivity and many more games, just so that you can go and have a look. Uh, when it did come to games, I'll be honest, it was a mixed bag, but it was a mixed bag with the 7700X and the 7950X as well. They always seem to kind of trade places with uh, Intel, depending on the game. It's kind of like the graphics card benchmarks. Uh, yes, clock speed will win out, but where they are in the middle of the graphs kind of seems to trade places. Some games like AMD, Cyberpunk definitely doesn't like AMD. Uh, but we have put a uh, few in there. And the last one that I would say is with Far Cry 6, there is very little to pick between any of them in reality. And I would probably be looking more at the average with Far Cry than I would be at the maximum. Just, and I know a lot of people say, why do you test at 1080p? I'm more interested in 1440. Well, the thing is with uh, 1080p is it's a processor limitation when you are running that. So we obviously, doing a processor review, we want to have the processor being the limitation rather than it being the graphics card being the limitation because that's really not going to get us anywhere when we're trying to decide what processor we want to be putting in our gaming system and I think here it's uh, for me personally based on the four processors that I have reviewed for the 7000 series now because I have reviewed all four I've been very lucky what I would say is if you're looking for a gaming processor then despite the fact uh, this is the cheapest of the bunch. Uh, it's £50 cheaper than the 13600K, but in my eyes, this is the one that you fit and forget, plonk it with your graphics card, get some reasonable cooling on it, <coughs> and then enjoy yourself and have fun with it. The 7900X, I have to say, for me, it's a good middle ground, but you are always going to wish that you bought the 7950X. Because I think with this one, if you're looking at it as just a gaming processor, then you'd better off have been buying that one. If you're looking at it for gaming and productivity, mm, yeah, okay, but I would say that maybe save a little bit more and just get the 7950X. This is in a strange kind of middle ground. I know a lot of you are going to end up buying it, but I think at the end of the day, if you are gaming on it, you're not really going to notice a lot of difference. And if you are productivity, then you are going to wish that you've got that one. Uh, the 7700X was in a weird kind of middle ground, but I did enjoy overclocking it. One of the things I will say, despite the fact someone's phoning me and ruining the video. Right, so the 7700X, I did enjoy uh, overclocking the most out of these. But if we were to talk about overclocking, I would actually say that the 13600K was the one that I enjoyed most of all. Uh, the other thing that I will say is I did say for the 7600X gaming system, 
100% that's where it belongs. But the other thing that I would say is mix in the fact that you are gonna need a new board and it's DDR5 only, and then you have got some complications there. But overall, the thing that I am most worried about is the temperatures, because you do need decent cooling for all of them. So that is my review to finish the uh, quad pack that we've had so far. I think we are gonna have some more fairly soon as well, so that should be fun, and I am looking forward to testing them. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, comment. More data on the website if you would like to click through. And the other most important thing is be nice to each other, because I'm fed up with the industry being full of negativity at the moment. So it would be lovely if we could all just try and get along, because we're all here for the same thing, and that is our love of PCs and being a part of the PC Master Race. But for now, at least this has been the tiniest one with another video for you, out. Ding! Love you, sis.